back with a second, slightly shorter video. Uh, some of you may notice that uh, the red, which signifies uh, the color number and some of the lines that divide up the color, will sometimes show through because the paint is not uh, completely 100% opaque paint. And I have started a second uh, coat on the background. And I recommend that you do this if, if you're uh, see seeing those colors. It will really actually help Help that background look uh, very nice and uh, I have started down here and I've been working my way up this direction and finishing up with uh, my little bit darker green right here. As I put that second coat on I'm actually seeing that red line up in this area go away and if hopefully you'll see how painterly the paint is looking it's it's kind of got a very nice texture. I'm sort of pouncing it on and then doing a, a blend over here into these edges. And how you blend it is really a personal choice. It's, it's just what you're happy with. When you put that second coat on, you're just reinforcing and strengthening that background color. And you wanna make the time to put that second coat on. And you can do the same thing uh, when you go to paint the animal itself. And that will also give it more body and more heft when you hang it up and just admire it and enjoy it in your home or wherever you're going, whatever, wherever you're going to put it. Okay, everybody, let's paint another component of the background next. That is the branch that the frog is perched on. And those are two colors. Uh, for the purposes of this one, it's number 652, which is number four and then uh, 1899 which matches up with number 14 and what you have to do is you almost have to like try to block out what's going on under here and over here that's why having this photo is so nice that crafties does this for you so you can start to differentiate but just like this green background we're going to put a second coat on uh, onto the branch that the frog is sitting on and i have the two shades uh, the main shades here there's also a third shade, which is number nine. It's a slight variation on red. And uh, let's go ahead and put a second coat on it. And the nice thing about doing the branch next is that it's starting to, with the background done, with the branch done, now you can kind of see the frog uh, really a little bit better. So let's put coat number two, uh, since I'm a left-hander, <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna work over right to left. And I'm using a smaller uh, brush. This one's also a flat. It's the smaller version. And uh, let's get this going. We'll get that second coat on. This is, the second coat is actually really making a big difference because now I can really see that beautiful plummy color. And it really does make it look like, um, you know, when you go and look at an actual branch on a tree, it, it's not one solid color. It has different uh, shapes and a lot of different things going on. My other advice would be don't overload the brush with too much paint. That way you have just that right amount on there. If you have to keep dipping it, that is okay. Okay, so you can see now how that slightly lighter red is really showing up now that I have two coats on. Hopefully you guys can see how that red is really starting to pop. Actually really, really nicely and, and a little faster than getting that initial coat on. Uh, take a look at all the different color stories that are here in, as part of this frog. And what, have I, what I've identified for today is that I'm going to paint all the blue shades in. Uh, there's quite a bit of blue and there's four different shades of blue that came uh, with this kit. So I've got them all laid out here and ready to go. And I will start with only the one shade and then just find the numbers here and also use this as a guide as well and get these blues painted in here. And then um, we'll move on to the next color story, which will probably be oranges and yellows. There's quite a bit of that as well and the reds too. So uh, we'll break it down through the different colors and we'll get going. I also have handy some Q-tips and I use these if I, you know, mess up and go a little bit over the line, you can just take a Q-tip, slightly dampen it, and then just kind of pick that paint up and roll it right off. 
So it's great to have a few Q-tips handy as well when you're doing this. I think we will start with 196, which is color number six. And again, uh, my other advice is depending on whether you are a left-hander or a right-hander, uh, as a left-hander, I'm gonna find sixes and start over here. That way I can kind of work this way and never you know, drag my hand and smear my paint. I'm using one of the smaller brushes. When you're using a smaller brush and you're going from a, a tight area and you're getting into a larger area while you're painting, all you have to do is exert a little downward pressure on the brush and it will push out more paint so that you can cover the area a little faster as well. Always make sure when you're done with one color and then moving on to the next color to close the lid on your paint. Acrylic paints uh, can dry quickly and you don't want to have uber thick semi dried out paint when you have to use that color again possibly especially if if you've got enough to maybe do that second coat um, depending on uh, if you're able to see either the black number or the red line uh, underneath that's printed on the canvas as well again I'm referencing the nice chart that comes with your kit uh, as I'm going along here as well as looking for the number too and making sure that I am in the same areas as what the number is indicating. And uh, the next color story that I'm going to start on are my colors that kind of are in the orange uh, category, 901, 970, and 1097. And the corresponding numbers on the frog are 7, 11, and 16. So to keep things a little more simplified, I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, the number 7. Now, most yellows in acrylic paints uh, do run a little on the uh, transparent side. So this is going to be one of those colors where you'll want to come back and do a second uh, coat. Now, some artists I know like to get a blow dryer out and dry their paints using a blow dryer. You can do that. I just don't recommend uh, setting it on the highest setting uh, for, the, for the amount of blowing that it does and uh, maybe set it on a lower setting as far as the heat. You don't want to get too hot and you don't want to have it uh, do anything where it's blowing too much. So, boy, half the fun of, of these little pods of paint is opening them up and you know, the, the plastic tends to obscure the color, but once you get it open, you see how beautiful the color is and what a great job uh, that Crafties has done in duplicating these colors, especially when there, it's an artist like me who very rarely works uh, color straight out of a tube. I really like to um, custom mix on my palette as I go. Having the guide is, you know, really, the, this thing truly uh, is godsend <laughs> to actually go back and find, find the number and kind of find those areas where those colors tend to congregate on the canvas. Now, because these yellow, orangish colors uh, tend to be a little more on the transparent side, um, these will be ones that I will definitely come back and put a second coat, uh, a second layer of the paint on. Number 16 right here. Okay, accidentally just ran right over another number there, so I'll pick that up with a slightly damp Q-tip. Okay, looks like um, we've got those colors covered pretty good for now, and uh, we'll move on to uh, the next batch of colors on this frog. Thanks for watching.